Sunny Sly, Combative Concepts, is those Warrior Academy. First off, I want to thank everybody for um, for the positive uh, comments on the last two videos. If you haven't seen them, it's Aikido the way that doesn't work part one and Aikido the way that doesn't work part two. <coughs> Excuse me. I really appreciate it. The comments were, the, all the comments were wonderful. Um, Great to see that a lot of people supported what I was saying and understood where I was coming from, especially in the Aikido world. A lot of Aikido people responded to those comments. I got a lot of uh, personal messages on Facebook, on my personal Facebook page and my Combative Concepts Facebook page, um, addressing the situation, and I was uh, very pleased on, on, on the positive response that I was getting. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. I really appreciate it. If you haven't seen Aikido the way that doesn't work part one and Aikido the way that doesn't work part two, check them out on YouTube. Um, just to make one thing clear, that, that video really wasn't really about bashing, in a sense, traditional Aikido. It was really trying to educate people that you're not learning a practical application of Aikido. Now, a lot of people commented about how, yeah, this would work, blah, blah, blah. It's all relies on your teacher and the way how you're taught. Yeah, it is, but <clears throat> I've said this time and time again. The way how you train in the dojo is the way how you're going to defend yourself on the street. End of story. If you're practicing a dance form in the dojo and you try to use that dance form on the street, you're not really going to be uh, surprised or you're really not going to be happy with, with the end result because it's, it's not going to bode well for you. Granted, I understand the traditional aspect of traditional Aikido. I get it. I was there. For those of you that commented and said negative comments towards me, um, you guys don't know me. You don't know my skill sets. You don't know the experience that I've had with traditional Aikido for 16 years. You weren't there. So you're not qualified to sit there and make comments when you don't know. But I get it. Keyboard commandos all day long, whatever. Bring your, bring your shitty ass comments. I can really care less. The people that I do care about are the ones that understand where I was coming from and that are still supportive. And a lot of those people are actually Aikido, traditional Aikido students. And a lot of them praise me for actually speaking out about this. Because not a lot of people have the balls to do it. And I did it. Okay. With that being said, um, I think I pretty much grabbed your attention on what I'm doing. It's time to get down to business. On the last video, on part two at the end, I have a trailer video of Steven Seagal's Aikido Rondori. That is going to be the next video. Was going to be the next video. I changed uh, the format of what we're doing. Instead of actually showing you uh, Steven Seagal's <clears throat> Aikido Rondori in the next coming video, that video is going to be maybe three or four videos down the road, which will happen quickly. Trust me, it will be uploaded soon. Um, what I'm doing first is I'm going to show you the inner workings of the way how that Rondori is done. The Tai Sabaki, okay, hand movement, as we refer to as hand deflections. There are four throws, Aikido Nage Waza, that you would use in tension style, our style of Rondori. And I'm going to do a video on two of those throws, and I'm going to do another video on the other two of those throws. This video today is going to focus on the Tai Sabaki, the hand deflections. There's four hand deflections that we use in this dojo with combative concepts as well as tension Aikido. I'm going to go over those somewhat in detail. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I'm going to give you guys a basic understanding of how this works with the hand deflections. Now you got to remember, our four main principles are not getting punch, grab, kick, or taken to the ground. How do you do that? Tai Sabaki, hand movements. Not allowing somebody to punch you, not allowing somebody to grab you, which somebody won't be able to take you to the ground if they can't grab onto you physically. So that's where this comes into play with this video. We'll go over those four hand deflections. Um, try to be as detailed as possible. Then you can take that. That's one element of the Rondori. The next video will be on two of the throws that are used in that rondori. I will go over that as well, so you see how that's done. The third video will be on the other two. There might be a fourth video after that, which will be a walkthrough, basically a soft rondori on how we do our rondori. So then I'll be able to show you how to deploy a throw, how to deploy a hand deflection, when to do it, when not to do it, how to move, with your, with, your, uh, with your bouquets, how to properly move with your bouquets, the reasoning behind that, so on and so forth. And then when we do the actual Rondori, 
you are gonna see a full beat down on Dory. It's basically smear the queer without the fucking ball. Okay? It is hardcore, it's intense, and it's uh, it's an eye opener. It's a major eye opener, okay? There is a lot of practical application with that style of Rondori out in the real world. Plain and simple, I'll go over that in that video, okay? But to give you an understanding about it or have you inform you a little bit about how that's done, okay? It's not your traditional style of Rondori where you got one guy in the middle and you got three UKs that are surrounding you and you're sashaying around doing figure eights around that, okay? There's no practical application to that. You're not learning in a traditional mindset how that would really work in the real world because you're never going to be able to move like that on the street if you're ever attacked by multiple people. If you got two attackers, three attackers, four attackers, whatever the case may be, there's no way you're going to be able to use traditional Rondori in that type of setting on the street. Never. Not in a million years. And if you think you can, you might want to pump the brakes a little bit, take a seat there, Hot Rod, because I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay. The tension guys that are out there that are supporting me wholeheartedly, they know because they've gone through this fight. When you do a full-fledged beatdown on door, you go through something that no other Aikido person has gone through if they're not doing tension Aikido. This is the real fucking deal when it comes to Ron Dory. The real deal. And what you get from that, once you do it, you go through a fire that nobody's ever gone through before. Your confidence level spikes, okay? Everybody goes down in this Rondori, not traditional Rondori where you're just dancing around, you know, woo -woo, you know, people are coming at you and you're doing this, you know, tango dance with three people and you're not being touched. This touchless Aikido shit is bullshit. These guys, they er lacquer the fuck out of you. They take you down on the ground, they're beating on you, they're holding you down, they're basically resisting you from trying to get back up. With that Rondori, we all know because we've done it. And the guys that have done it, you know who I'm talking to here. You guys know what it's all about. It's not about how you go down. It's the way how you get back up. You don't ever quit. Quitting is not in our vocabulary when it comes to that. You sit there and you, you try your ass off. You get up. You do the best that you can to get up. You don't ever quit until the sensei yells yame, which means stop. Okay? You do your best to get up. There's a reason for that. And there's an application for that on the street, and I will address that in the Rod Dory beatdown. So, with that being said, we're gonna get started. Last but not least, I wanna thank my senior student, Chris Luber, my Uke that's been in uh, a lot of these videos. Hi, don't wanna have to raise my He and Frank Gipperato and Bob Kamka, they're my seat. Uh, three senior guys that have been with me for years and years and years. They were with me back in the Aikido days. And you probably couldn't tell that we don't do Aikido on a regular basis because of Luru Kemi. Luru Kemi is pretty hardcore. Um, and just to touch on that for one second. The Rondori, or excuse me, not the Rondori, the Ukemi that we do, <clears throat> all Aikido people know this, okay? You take Ukemi to save yourself, okay? That's what it is. So you can get back up, you can attack again, and so on and so forth. Yukemi is a huge aspect, obviously, of Aikido, because these techniques are designed to hurt people, plain and simple. Okay, in a self-defense aspect, you're hurting somebody. In the real world, you do something like this to somebody on the street, they're not gonna be taking a break fall, they're not gonna be taking a roll to get back up to attack you again. It's a one-stop shop type of move, boom, it's done, you're down, cancel Christmas, it's over, okay? End of story, it's done. These guys, these guys take the hard ukemi, I smash them all the time because they allow me to be able to do this. Having that skill set of a much higher advanced form of ukemi is gonna help the nage with his technique, okay? It's not 50% uke, 50% nage, where the nage's not, nage's not paying attention to what's going on or walking through shit half-assedly, it's not like that. It's 100% uke, 100% nage. His job is to make sure not to get smashed, not to get hurt, to be able to get back up and do it again. My job, Nage's job, is to be able to unload technique, to be able to take that from 50% power to 75% power, to 100% power to 110% power. Okay? That's how your Aikido progresses, is through power of application of applied technique. Okay? That's how you get really good. Okay, if you walk through this, 
doing Aikido yoga all the time, you're never gonna know what your true potential is if you have to use a sound and strength. So, that being said, welcome to Steven Seagal's Tai Sabaki video. <clears throat> what we're first gonna start off with is the first hand deflection. It's uh, most attacks in the Rondori, and most, most Rondoris aren't striking attacks, they're more of a grabbing, shoving type of attack. So what we use in our Rondori is a real kata dori, which is a double shoulder grab, double shoulder shove, or a mune, or kata, but mune. Okay, most people are going to push you to the center of your chest rather than your shoulder. A mune dori, or a mune kata dori, which is a grab or a shove. Okay, first technique I'm going to show is soto giri, which is an outside cut. Now, to get into a little bit of description of that, this technique cannot be done with this lifeless arm. You have to have your take a which is your hand weight. This has to be firm. You have to be able to have key energy from this. It has to be precise. You have to be able to cut. It's wrist on wrist. That's the application, how it's applied. You're capturing his wrist as he's going to shove you. Okay, if you miss the wrist and you go to the elbow or back of the tricep, chances are you're probably going to get clipped in the face on this. And this is what I'm going to show. Hey, I'm going to So, as Chris goes to do a mune, Dori, Mune Shaw. If I'm late on this and he follows through, this can go right up to my face and capture my face. Now I'm going to wind up getting hit. I still might be able to get the deflection off, but it's going to be really sloppy. If I'm too soon, he's going to end up sh shoving my shoulder or bumping into me. So you have to be careful that you don't turn your back on this and get shoved. So it's proper distance, distance, balance, and timing. Okay? The attacker has to have proper distance, balance, and timing as well. Remember, this is tension Aikido. I'm not talking about street application of this. This is an Aikido application of this. So when you attack, this has to be firm, but you have to be able to be mobile with your ukemi. Okay, not a robot, Ugh, you know, Frankenstein shit. I see this all the time in Rondoris and whatnot. This has to be a firm attack. So as he goes to attack him slowly, you want to be able to capture this movement. Okay, the same token, you want to be able to deflect and with the opposite hand, cover your face. For the sake of fail-safe purposes, if this doesn't happen here, he can now punch me in my face. Why would I want my hand down at that point? I'm not going to want to see what that feels like. So if he actually, if I miss this, boom, and I turn, and he's able to punch, he's going to end up hitting my hand. I'm not giving him a solid target to actually make connection on. So as he attacks, you want to be able to cut through and move fast, okay? Again, so as it happens, cut, okay? Cut. So, one more time. This happens here, you wanna be able to cut this. Then from there, as you do this, it's not pushing the arm, it's not pushing the arm down. You're keeping this on the same plane as you move, okay? You're deflecting this movement. So this attacker, your uke, should have firm intent behind his attack. The minute that I touch him, it's not about trying to push him away, okay? So as he has this, it's not doing this, because he's gonna keep coming, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna collide shoulders together, and there's no masubi. There's no harmony, there's no blending with the technique. So you want this movement to blend with the technique as you move. You're blending as you move. Blend as you move. Blend. Okay? Blend. Blend. Awesome. That one's good. A little, little strong. A little strong. Cut. Cut. Okay? That's Soto Giri. From a Rondori standpoint, I'm going to show you how it's cut down in that video. But that's the basic application of it. The next hand deflection that we're going to move to is called Suyagi. Now, one thing I forgot to say was all these hand deflections are based off of Kenjutsu. Kenjutsu is practical application of sword technique. Okay? For some of you that don't know, Aikido, Judo, Karate, which originally was called Karate Do, uh, Nimpo, anything that usually ends with Do means way way of harmony, so on and so forth, okay? 
Might not be the right way, might not be the wrong way. It's the way that you were taught, or it was your way. Anything ends with jitsu, kenjitsu, ei jitsu, ninjitsu. Uh, right, Matt? Brazilian jiu jitsu. So on and so forth. Jiu jitsu means practical application. Fighting style, budo, real budo. That's what those, those terms mean. <laughs> Aikido Jiu Jitsu, where Aikido originally uh, came from. The next application is Suryage movement. So, from a Shomenuchi cut, to the top of the head, right side please, from a Shomenuchi cut, the deflection comes through. A little more powerful. Little more powerful. You want to get this deflection. You don't want to get the deflection to where it's here and you're being, your center is being compromised. You want to be able to sit there and have this deflection. Okay, one more. And then you have this right here on this. Basically, you're cutting through the center, where now you can move, you can throw. Okay? The attack, too, has to be honest. Your shomenuchi strike can't be here and cutting all the way down. Shomenuchi strike means cut to the top of the head. So when you cut, you're right there. Now I'm not saying free strain, but you have intent with that. Okay? Now from a Rondori standpoint, and we're talking about Rondori, I'll go back into a demonstration of Suyagi in a second. <clears throat> Off of the show Minuchi cut. From a Rondori standpoint, now we're talking real kata or Mune Dori, Mune Kata, Dori. This shove with Suyagi, you want to piece. Has to come up from underneath. Okay? At that point, you want to be able to move. Okay? This actual application of this. Actual application. So you can move in all different types of technique, whatever at that point. Okay? This application is used if you get in that point where you're kind of getting flooded with uh, with bouquets coming at you. You want to be able to deflect. So if he was coming at me with two hands, you're going to want to be able to deflect, then you can move into Soto Gigi if you had to. So these techniques are interchangeable with one another. You go from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. You can do a whole Rondori, which is Tai Sabaki Rondori, which we did when I taught Aikido on a regular basis. We used that platform as a training platform where we did all of the hand deflections with no throws in a Rondori. <coughs> Excuse me. And we actually sectioned off mats where we had students line up around the mats, and it was kind of like monkey in the middle. You had three ukes and a very small space of mats, and you would practice hand deflections the whole entire time. You'd sit there and do this. You'd be moving in this small section. <clears throat> that allows you to be able to intertwine yourself within the rondori of a two-man, three-man rondori, okay? If you use the whole entire space of the dojo, it becomes a problem because A, you start getting out of breath, your students are chasing you down, there's a lot of, there's a lot of spaces being used. You want to use this in the smallest space that you possibly can within reason. The smaller, the more advanced you get at doing this, the smaller the amount of space you were able to perform on your ring, the better. Because out there in the real world using this, yeah, you're going to have wide open spaces, but what if you're caught in a situation where you don't have a lot of space to move? You want to be able to know how to negotiate your space. Negotiate the people that are attacking within a small amount of space. But that's at a more heightened, advanced level of Rondori. But within the practice of learning the hand deflections and the techniques and so on, and then seeing the Rondori video, you'll see where I'm coming from on that, and then this is a learning thing for you guys, to where you can take this and you can practice this on your own, and you can evolve your training to that point where you can use that small space within your dojo to do this. Okay. So, the Sudiagi movement again, so slowly, you want to be able to deflect with this. Now remember, don't turn too soon because then you end up hitting the shoulder, okay? So, you want this movement where you actually turn and your hip turns into this and then you turn your hand out. Okay, remember, this movement, take a time, has to move, okay? You just can't do this and then try to move with this and stand straight up. Like, you know, some 
I keep what people do. They don't bend their knees and they stand still. Like, oh, you know, okay. Ugh. Doesn't work. Got to bend your knees. Come down to his level. Where you move this? You're moving. You're so believing. Right? Who can I ask you? Suyaga. Suyaga. And you move. It's fast. It's explosive. It's supposed to be. Okay? Somebody comes and shoves you fast. Wham! They get you. Your hand, your hand movement's slow. You're going to get caught. Okay? RAM stands for Rapid Arm Movement. That's exactly what gets applied here within the Tai Sabaki train. Your hands have to be quick, very quick. If you look at Steven Skull Sensei, for example, you look at Path Beyond Thought, the documentary that was made of him back in 1999. His hand movement is fast, lightning fast. For a six foot four guy, his hands are extremely quick. Train yourself to be that way. Why not? It's just going to benefit you in the long run where you're going to be able to get these deflections so much faster. Okay, but it also incorporates, remember, distance, balance, and timing. Okay? If you're sloppy and you're, you know, you're all over the place, your hand deflections aren't going to matter. Okay? Now this is, this video of Tai Sabaki is for everybody. Traditional Aikido people as well. Okay? Your senseis aren't obviously going to show you this stuff because they don't know it. And for the ones that claim that their senseis do know it, um, I call bullshit because if they did, they would understand the principles behind it, they would understand the necessity to learn it, and they would understand the application on how to apply it. And the only people that I see doing this are my people, my Tenshin Aikido family. Those are the only people that I see doing it, okay? I don't see anybody else in, in traditional Aikido doing this. So this is my gift to you, okay? I'm giving this to you to help you further your knowledge, educate you on how to not get punched, grabbed, or kicked, to the, you know, or taken to the ground. This will help you in the long run. If you don't like anything else I'm doing or like anything else I'm saying, hey, great. Don't watch my videos because you don't want to learn anything, don't watch my videos because you hate me. Watch my videos because you're going to learn something. Okay? I will teach every single one of you something that you don't know. Hence, Tai Sabaki. How many people do this in their dojo? If you do, if you do do Tai Sabaki in your dojo, I know you're not doing it like this. I know you're not. So, Suyagi one more time is this application of deflecting this. Remember, this is a sword cut. So you move. Okay? Set up. Boom. You're moving. Boom. You're moving. Okay? See how I'm blending? See how my UK is blending with this? Okay? One more time, right side. You're moving. Okay? You're moving. This can turn into a lot of other stuff from here to where you can get this into Nikyo technique. Yubi Ori. Okay? Grab this. Do an elbow lock. Keep your good eye. Whatever. You can do this into, uh, you know, here, into Nikyo. I'm sorry. Sankyo. Mess up. Sorry, guys. So from here, moving into Nikyo, reversing out of this into Kultagaichi. Growing. Okay? So a lot you can do with this. So one more attack, one more series of attacks from Shogunuchi. That's it. That's it. That's it. This deflection. Deflection. Now when you see how this deflection is done, okay, the symbols of Aikido, Aikido, Aikido has three symbols. We all know this. This is universal. Triangle, circle, square. The triangle represents coming offline in hand deflections. Okay? If you do your hand deflection on Tsuriyage, where it's this, you're going to end up getting hit. You're going to get crushed. So, just stand over here for a second so the camera view sees this. 
move that way so you get the camera view of this. Right side. So when the camera, if it's straight in, he's gonna crush right through and take my center. Okay? Hey. So right from here, he's gonna crush in on me. Can't be afraid to take this hit. Create the triangle. That's when you see a lot of us sit there and do this. We're creating a triangle right here with our hands. Kind of like item sights on a gun. Okay? He comes in attacks with that. You want to be able to get this hand to flesh. Get this hand to flesh. And then your hand should be right at his forehead. Okay? One more time. Right? So you have that. Okay? And then this can turn, right side? This can turn into technique at this point. And you can throw. This also can turn into eating out of slow. From here, into eating out of Okay? The hand of flesh. Okay? Side, please. From here, the flesh. Eating out One more. That's how the Suyage will work in relation to eating out of You have to be able to get the hand of flesh in. Right. To be able to do this. One more. So here, then this comes right in. What I was taught originally is that this movement happens here, and then the hand somehow crosses in front of the face. Eh. When I watch the goal since they do it, I don't exactly see it that way. It's more along the lines of here, then the throw happens. Your hand going across the person's face, and it, I don't want to worry about that. So that was studiate. The next reflection we're going to do is what I call kiriage, which is a diagonal sword cut from down to up. You're going from the ground up. The way how we do this is that we actually have nicknamed this the bitch slap. Because when it's done on a shoulder attack, slow, or a moon attack, you're slapping the hand. You want to make sure that you slap the hand and you hit your shoulder. Every time you get this deflection, you should feel this pull, pull, hitting your shoulder every single time. Every single time you should have that. You have to be fast on this. If you're not, you're gonna get clipped. Right? So from here, see? Wasn't fast enough. I got it. See, I have that. You wanna be able to get this deflection to where you have this. Notice how you lost his balance? That's the point hand, so slow. This deflection slaps. Keeps going, and then you can actually move this into eating or whatever. Or anything for that matter. From here, okay. So again, that comes in. You want this deflection, remember? This is similar to soul to eating, but this is a deflection, okay? You want to make sure that you don't get clipped on this, you deflect. So kiyage movement, reflection. From here you can throw. Move into other techniques. Okay. So once again, we worked on slowly. Soto e, same side. Ukenagashi, excuse me, suriage, suriage movement, suriage movement. Now we're gonna move into ukenagashi. Ukenagashi is the sword of reflection that all Aikido people know. With the sword deflection, you're going to turn your sword up. The way you defend with the sword on this is you're going to use the back side of the sword. You're not going to use the blade, the kasana. So you're going to use that. So with this type of attack, slowly, Yokomuchi, okay, as he does this, you're going to blend with this movement. Okay, so you're going to come up from underneath and you're going to blend. You're going to collapse. And you're going to move through to where then you can capture. Okay, so this movement is ear, circle, capture. Okay, capture. So the movement is that. If you do this here and you don't collapse, you don't bring your elbow up enough, this collapses and the uke hits you. Okay? This strike. Okay? Don't have your hand like this when you're doing yoga minuchi. You want more of this kind of cutting hand. You're using the tegatana, bent wrist as you're cutting. So as that happens, you cut it. Side of the head, this cut. It's not pushing through either. I've seen this a lot. Don't push through. Cut. Again. Cut. So you want this deflection of that. Cut. 
then there you have technique. Okay? But, so your ukanagashi movement is that. So you want this to blend. So slow, as it connects, you're going to start rotating. The elbow has to be higher than your head to where then you can move this offline and capture. From there, you can move into Kotagaishi, Norosuke, Age, whatever. Okay, Vita is open again. You can move straight into this with Norosuke, Age and throw. Okay, but initially, you're Ukanagashi off the open energy attack. Okay, Ukanagashi. Okay. Off of grabbing in the Rondori, this is where they get cut down. One the Ukenagashi movement is going to be low. So this, this applies, this works when your Uke is too close to you and you can't get off a Soto Gi. The Kiriyaki move, you can probably get that off pretty quick if you're really close. The ukenagashi movement, you're going to want to use this if your ukes are too close to you, okay, where you can move. Where then you can suyage, soto gi, suyage, ukenagashi, 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 right? Where then you can do whatever at that point. So, that's it for our hand inflections. We're over our four hand inflections that we use encompassing the Rondori. The next video will be on two of the Nage Waza techniques that's used in the Rondori. So, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Like our uh, Combative Concepts, our Izzo's Warrior Combative Concepts Facebook page. See you next time on Combative Concepts. Thanks for watching.